Good day, this is Dr. Conrad Miller with your Fukushima update for April 14, 2016. Today I'm going to share with you some information imparted to us by Arne Gunderson, nuclear engineer with Fairwinds.org, and Mary Olson from the Nuclear Information Resource Service in Washington, D.C. These two people went to Japan for 30 days, recently came back, did a telebriefing, and this is what they told us. Fukushima Prefecture, which is about the size of Connecticut, is recontaminating itself with radiation. That's where they had the meltdowns, the explosions, the tsunami, the deaths, and for the last five years, three to four hundred tons of radioactive water has been running out of the Fukushima Daiichi destroyed nuclear plant per day into the Pacific Ocean. Now, Japan has redefined uh, what's allowable, acceptable radiation exposure from 100 millirems per year, which is normal background at sea level, to 20 times that to be acceptable at 2,000 millirems exposure per year, which of course will increase cancer rates and so on. Now, Arnie went and visited this man who lived ac across a ravine from a house that was deemed too radioactive to live in. His area, he said, was cleaned up, but later he was worried about it, so he retested the soil and found that it was way too high in radioactivity. So he decided he'd dig it up, clean it up, put it in bags, and wait for the Tokyo Electric Power Company people to come pick it up. So when he called TEPCO, they said, oh, your area is already clean. We're not coming to pick that up. Arnie also tested the feces of monkeys and cattle and found that they tested at 50,000 becquerels per kilogram, which is really very, very, very high. One becquerel is one atomic disintegration per second. So 50,000 will be very high. These disintegrations will be nucleuses that are disintegrating and striking your DNA and causing mutations and possibly cancer later. Then he went to Minamisoma, a town of 60,000 people that had been evacuated, and then the people, they're encouraging them to come back. He went to the town hall, climbed up to the roof 40 feet in the air, where they had put up some new solar collectors and epoxied the roof so it looked very clean. And he looked at the dust that was there, and he decided to test it. And the dust there tested at 300,000 becquerels per kilogram. Now, the people in Fukushima are breathing in this dust. So this is not very safe. So he went to, down to Tokyo and he tested some dirt in a pot just in front of the Ministry of Industry and that tested at 4,000 becquerels per kilogram. And then the dust in the street in the gutters tested at 2,000 becquerels per kilogram. So he feels that all this shows an inhumanity of the Japanese government to its own people to allow this to go on. The um, fish are often used in Japan as fertilizer, and the fish, of course, is very radioactive. For example, off Fukushima, it's about a thousand becquerels per kilogram or more, usually. So they're taking the fish, they grind the bones up, and they're throwing it in the field as fertilizer. Now, Mary, and that's rich in strontium, which goes to your bones. Bones. Uh, Calcium and strontium are similarly uh, accepted in the body and go to the bones. And strontium can cause bone marrow cancer, leukemia, and other cancers. Another problem in Japan is the doctors. The doctors are being harassed under a high amount of pressure not to, di to diagnose any radiation-caused illnesses or any radiation symptoms. Some doctors have lost their hospital privileges. Another doctor had to close his practice that I already spoke to because he was finding that people had these symptoms of their hair falling out, hypersensitivities, nosebleeds, and other uh, problems with their hormones. One lady who had thyroid cancer and knew she was exposed to a high dose of radiation had her hair falling out and funny speckled lesions on her face, uh, nosebleeds, 
and she was told it was stress, as that's the byword that the doctors are supposed to use for any radiation symptoms, stress and anxiety. And there are two female doctors who have been treating the Fukushima and Hiroshima A-bomb victims over the last several years and decades. And they said that the medical society is totally sold out to the so-called nuclear mafia. Yeah. Now Mary spoke with the, the grandmothers and who are staying in temporary housing and they apparently have not been told anything about how to deal with radiation, what food to eat, what not to eat. They get all their information apparently from the newspapers in TEPCO. So when Mary listened to them, she realized this and she told them what to do, but also that cesium has a half-life of 30 years, but that's not the time that they really have to worry about it only. They have to worry about radioactive contamination for at least 300 to 600 years, because a half-life is 30 years and a hazardous life is 10 to 20 half-lives, which is for cesium-137, 300 to 600 years, plus there's all the other radioisotopes, hundreds of them, especially, for example, plutonium, that has a half-life of 24,000 years and can cause lung cancer with a millionth of a gram dose, 454 grams in a pound. I'll give you some notes on that in one of the little bubbles here. So that was very distressing to the grandmothers. Mary also noted that there are recurring hot spots outside of Fukushima, and she was told that a woman in Tokyo who was testing is in uh, her building, her exposure is 125 milli milligrams per hour. And it's the background radiation really that should be allowed is 100 milligrams per year. So that's not very good. The International Atomic Energy Agency, which people think is a nuclear watchdog, but actually is a nuclear promoter, is in its charter has decided to open a little facility in Fukushima to show how little harm radiation produces for the children, especially of Fukushima. And also, Japan is pushing to have some of the Olympic trials in 2020 in Fukushima. So, there are organizations trying to fight this, like Mama Becquerel. Uh, they have a publication called Mama Revolution on the internet. Uh, what else? The, the doctors are only keeping medical records for two years, and they're destroying them, by the way. They're doing whole body counts, and the patients can't get the results. And then the records are destroyed in two years. The water's being tested. They're mailing, citizens are whaling, mailing the water into uh, Woods Hole in the United States. And close to shore, it's testing three becquerels per cubic meter in the Pacific close to shore, and 10 becquerels per cubic meter offshore, about 1,000 kilometers. Fukushima is about 10 times worse than that. Remember that in Japan, the limits for too toxic to ingest food is 100 becquerels kilogram of cesium in the fish, for example. The United States allows 1,200 becquerels per kilogram. Germany only allows five becquerels per kilogram. Also note that Har Arnie said that Hillary in 2011 signed an agreement that we would not measure radiation levels on what we imported from Japan. And that's been going on since 2011. Meanwhile, we're importing hundreds of millions of fish and only about 200 are being tested, which is obviously very inadequate. So basically, Arnie says that Fukushima Prefecture obviously is not safe for human habitation. And they also mentioned that there's a movie called The Ultimate Wish Ending the Nuclear Age relating uh, atomic weapons and nuclear energy to the overall picture of our survival on planet Earth. That is the end of your Fukushima update for April 14, 2016. See you soon with the next update. Dr. Conrad Miller signing off.